Critics trashed them as a made-for-TV rock and roll band, but for a couple of years in the late 60s, the Monkees were one of the hottest acts around. Now Mickey Dolenz has written a book about his dizzy days as a monkey, and that's today's Inside Story. I don't remember much about those years, to be honest. I'm told I had a great time. In 1966, the Monkees first appeared on TV and became a pop culture phenomenon. Mickey Dolenz, Davy Jones, Peter Tork, and Mike Nesmith were called the equals of the Beatles. A comparison Dolenz has always found unsettling. And it was a television show about a band like Star Trek is a show about astronauts. And to compare the Monkees to the Beatles is a bit like comparing Star Trek or w William Shatner to Neil Armstrong. Needs unskilled help in non-essential job requiring no training or no experience. In the book, Dolenz tells of his life in show business, ranging from his days as a child actor in the TV series Circus Boy to those wild monkey years. Take the last Although they started out as actors pretending to be a band, their popularity forced them to go out on the road and become a real band. The success that swallowed them was overwhelming. Yeah, it is a bit like an addiction you know, to, to the attention and to the phone calls and to they want me, they want me, and, and you know, you get sucked into this thing. Their fame led to a meeting with their supposed British counterparts, the Beatles. Mickey claims he met Paul McCartney and promptly smoked pot with him. And we just sat and hung and like smoked this massive great thing, you know, about, yeah. and uh, just uh, kind of, you know, talked and, and um, I don't remember exactly, you know, too much of what we said, but one doesn't in those circumstances. Dolan says he was not a big drug user, but also alleges that he took LSD with John Lennon and Brian Wilson. The last acid trip was with, um, John was there and Brian Wilson and a couple of other people and I just remember just being bored to death, you know, watching my hand turn into a snake again, you know. Oh, the old hand of the snake routine, oh, jeez. Their meteoric rise did not last. Friction among band members and fights with producers eventually tore the group apart. The TV show was canceled and the group ultimately went their separate ways. Mickey tried to get more acting work. I went to a few interviews after the Monkees, and they said, uh, what are you doing here? We don't need any drummers. One party tried out for was that of the Fonz on Happy Days. Henry Winkler tells the story. I don't remember him being there, of course, um, but he remembers me being there. And he, he, he says, he tells a story that he, I walked in and he thought, oh, no, Mickey Dolenz is here. I'll never get the part. Mickey finally found success behind the camera, turning to directing television in London, including this spitting image show. He rejoined the guys back in the States for a reunion tour in the 80s, and now lives with his four daughters in Los Angeles. He says he's come to terms with his life as a monkey. It was the biggest, greatest thing that ever happened to me. I wouldn't be here today uh, if it wasn't for that, and I wouldn't be doing a lot of the things that I'm doing if it wasn't for that, so I'm extremely grateful for it. As for the rest of the monkeys, Davy Jones races racehorses in Pennsylvania and still acts occasionally, and he has his own monkeys book coming out. Michael Nesmith has his own video production company and record label. Peter Tork pops up now and to perform live, otherwise he stays out of the spotlight. Mickey Dolenz's book is in stores right now. It's hard to believe, but half